Today we're going to take a look at the Bird Model 43 Throughline RF Watt Meter. This is a directional RF power meter that gets inserted in line between the transmitter or amplifier and the antenna or the load and measures power in either direction, either in the forward direction from the amplifier or transmitter to the load and then also reflected power coming back from the load or antenna system. These meters are still being sold new by Bird Electronic uh, out of uh, Ohio, essentially unchanged from when they were introduced uh, more than 60 years ago. It's just a good example of a design that was done so well that there was little need to change anything about it and it's still very useful today. The full scale power range and the frequency range for the meter is determined by which element or slug is inserted into the meter. The elements or slugs are inserted into the line section of the meter. The line section is just an air insulated coaxial line that connects one end of the meter to the other. The elements are effectively sensors that get inserted into the line section and uh, are coupled to the uh, energy that's flowing through the line. And they're coupled in such a way that they can detect power that's going only in one direction. And that direction is indicated by the arrow on the element. With the arrow pointed in this direction, the meter will read the power flowing from into this port and out of that one. You simply rotate the element around to the other direction to measure power flowing in the reverse direction. The elements are rated for a given full scale power. This is a 10 watt element, so we would use the scale that goes from 0 to 100 and just move the decimal point uh, one place. Uh, in that case, there's an element that uh, whose full scale power is 250 watts. We'd use the top scale uh, for that one. And here's an element that's rated for uh, 100 watts. Again, we'd use the bottom scale for that. Here's an element that's rated for 500 watts, and we'd use the middle scale, the one that goes up to 50, and we just add a zero to all of our measurements. The elements are also rated for their frequency of operation. This element here is a 25 to 60 megahertz element. Uh, this one here is a 100 to 250 megahertz element, and this one here is a 2 to 30 megahertz or HF element. Well, there are dozens and dozens of elements available ranging from you know, below 500 kilohertz to 2.7 gigahertz. The most common elements that uh, amateur radio operators are likely to use are these lettered elements. Uh, the H element is the HF element, that's the 2 to 30 megahertz, and then the letters A through E correspond to these frequency ranges for some low VHF and medium VHF to UHF um, uh, elements. The number associated with the, the element indicates the total power. So a 100H element is a 100 watt HF element, while a 10C is a uh, 10 watt 100 megahertz to 250 megahertz uh, VHF element. Each element is effectively just a directional coupler, uh, essentially being able to sense power flowing in one direction in the transmission line and sending a signal out to the meter to indicate that total power. Now the coupling circuit in the element is located underneath this uh, kind of plastic cap here. That couples very closely to the center conductor of the line section. There's an electrical contact on either side of the element so that whether you've got the element rotated in the forward direction or the reverse direction, that makes contact to the meter. If we take a quick look inside of the line section, we can actually see that contact right there. Now the meter itself actually has storage locations for two additional elements, one on each side. So in addition to the one you've got in the line section, you can essentially have three elements with you when you carry the meter around. Oftentimes you'll see people will have a dummy element, just like this solid slug of aluminum here. And that might be installed in the side to take up a vacant hole to keep dust from getting in the meter, or it might even be installed in the line section itself. And the reason for that is if you install this in there, it shorts the terminals of the meter out and that prevents transients from damaging the meter movement. It also dampens the meter movement. You'll notice if there's no element in here, the meter can actually bounce around quite a bit. So if you're transporting this meter, it's possible to damage that meter movement. But by shorting the terminals, that will dampen that. And that could be done again with that dummy element or simply by taking one of your existing uh, measurement elements and instead of rotating it all the way to the stop for forward or reverse direction, just rotate it 90 degrees. And now, you can see how much less that meter is moving when I move the meter around compared to when I'm in the measurement mode here. 
So it's actually a pretty good idea when you're transporting the meter or not using it to simply rotate the element by 90 degrees to short the terminals of the meter to protect it. The RF input and output connectors on the meter are interchangeable. These are called QC or quick change connectors and by simply removing all four screws uh, from each connector you can actually swap it out for other ones. So with all four screws removed we can simply slide this connector out of the line section and replace it say with an end connector and this replace the four screws. There are many different connector types that are available for these meters. Directional watt meters like the BIRD 43 don't directly measure standing wave ratio or SWR. They measure essentially forward power and reverse power. From those measurements you can compute SWR or you can simply look them up on a chart like this. It's printed in the user manual and it's also available from BIRD and other places where you simply uh, go to your measured forward power, your measured reflected power, find the intersection of those lines and read off the standing wave ratio. Now if you're tuning an antenna system or tuning the input to an amplifier or something like that, the end goal is you just want to minimize reflected power. Minimizing reflected power will minimize uh, voltage standing wave ratio. So using the meter is actually very straightforward. Simply insert it in line between your transmitter or amplifier and the load. In this case we're just using a 50 ohm dummy load. Be sure to select an element whose frequency range encompasses the frequency you're going to transmit on and whose power level is equal to or greater than the maximum power that you expect to get out of your device. And then be sure to rotate the element for the direction of the power you wish to measure. In our case the transmitter is connected here. We want to measure forward power to the dummy load so we'll put the element in that direction. The transceiver here is just a low power uh, 10 watt maximum transceiver. I've got it set to FM so that will give me a uh, a solid 10 watt carrier when I key the microphone. And then we do that, we can actually see that I've got a, a full 10 watts coming out of the uh, transmitter, as indicated by the full scale reading with the 10 watt element. If I switch this rig to AM, the AM carrier is going to be lower. We key the microphone, again reading on the bottom scale, we can see that the uh, carrier power in this case is uh, about uh, 3 watts, just a little bit over 3 watts. Now keep in mind the BIRD 43 is not a peak reading watt meter. So if we go to a mode such as single sideband and transmit with that, you know, there is no carrier. So all you're going to see is some response to uh, power while you're speaking. We can see from the rigs meter that we're reaching our full output power during voice peaks, but the BIRD will not respond fast enough to show you that. Uh, BIRD does sell a peak reading kit that can be added to the 43. They also sell a 43P that has that already built in. And there are also third party companies that make uh, peak reading uh, kits that you can add to your own BIRD 43 to turn it into a peak reading meter for modes such as single sideband that don't have a carrier. Of course to measure reverse or reflected power we simply turn the element back to the opposite stop. We'll measure power going in this direction. Let's we'll switch the rig back into uh, FM mode where we get a, a 10 watt carrier and we can see very little meter deflection here uh, in the reverse direction. Uh, it's just All that means is that my uh, 50 ohm dummy load isn't a perfect 50 ohms and we're getting a very small amount of reflected power here. So indicating that uh, the SWR is quite good, probably less than 1.2 or 1.1 to 1. Now, as I mentioned, Bird sells a couple of variations of the 43. There is the 43P a couple of other variations. Another really handy one is this one here. This is the, uh, the model uh, 4431. And it's basically a BIRD 43, but it has a adjustable RF tap in it. So this uh, is kind of like a, an RF sampler that's adjustable. And you could take this output and bring it into, say, a frequency counter or an oscilloscope or a spectrum analyzer and get a small sample of the RF power that's going through the device to monitor in a different way. So it's a really handy thing to have on the bench. So if you run across a 4431 uh, instead of a 43, uh, it works exactly the same way the 43 does with that added feature of the adjustable tap. So a nice handy unit to take a look at. So I hope you found this overview of the BIRD 43 through-line directional watt meter uh, interesting and informative. Uh, comments are always welcome. And if you like what you see, uh, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and tell your friends. Thanks again for watching.